Once upon a time, I started a booktube channel, and I realized that part of the requirement in starting a booktube channel is having a top 10 fantasy series of all time list. It is known. It is known. It is known. Hey, welcome back to BellTube. I'm Brian Bell. Today is a video I'm really excited to make, and it's been a long time coming, if we consider a long time coming, about seven weeks. All right, so today we're doing my top 10 fantasy series of all time. This is such a subjective list, you guys. In making a top 10 list, it's extremely difficult, but I started to realize, you know what? I don't need to take this so seriously. Lists change, they're very subjective, and you know what? At any time I can change my mind and do a new list. That's why in the spirit of being fun and more spontaneous and not being so rigid in this list, I decided to throw on a Pierre Cardin original velvet red smoking jacket from the 1970s. This is actually my dad's. So let's have some fun today. Let's do a top 10 list. One thing that I should say is that you're not gonna see Malazan Book of the Fallen on this list only because I haven't read it yet. I do have Gardens of the Moon. I'm gonna start the series in 2024, but I haven't read it yet, so obviously it's not on this list. So let's first start with a few honorable mentions. Oh, hang on one second. Hello? Yes, I'm filming. I said you were on the list. No, you're not an honorable mention. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay, uh-huh. Fine. You know what? You're on the phone with me right now. Do you know what everybody wishes you were actually doing? Uh-huh. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll call you later. Oh, hey, Lou says he can't bowl Thursday night, so if you can find a fill-in, that would be amazing. All right. All right, I'll call you when I'm done. Yeah, bye. Okay, let's talk honorable mentions. There's three of them on this list, and the first one is going to be something that I just read this year, and the first honorable mention is going to go to Gene Wolfe's Book of the New Sun, Absolutely love the series, had to include it. The second honorable mention is the Harry Potter series. I love it. It's something that I'm going to remember forever. And that's going to be kind of a theme in this top 10 list is that the characters themselves play a big part in where different books ranked on this list. Harry Potter, I just love it. So that's going to be an honorable mention. And the third honorable mention is written by an author who has, without a doubt, the greatest television show in the history of the universe. Yeah, my third honorable mention and the one that came the closest to cracking the top 10 is Brian Lee Durfee's Five Warrior Angel Trilogy. It's spectacular. It subverts expectations like no book I've ever read. And the battle scenes are absolutely batshit bonkers. I love it so much. I suspect the Five Warrior Angels series may creep into the top 10 in years moving forward. Or you know what? Maybe we'll do another list in a month or two and it'll move in. We don't need to take this so seriously. Okay, so coming in at number 10 on my greatest fantasy series of all time list is going to be Fonda Lee's Greenbone Saga. The characters in this series speak for themselves. I loved it a ton. I'm one of the rare few, I think, that prefers Jade War over Jade City and Jade Legacy. And for me, that's where I would actually rank those books. Jade Legacy, to me, had something going on. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read it, but it was a particular style of writing the book that just did not land for me the way that it has for pretty much everybody else. It was very abrupt in its delivery for me. So while I may not have enjoyed Jade Legacy quite as much as Jade War and Jade City, obviously, if it's in my top 10 fantasy series of all time, it's clearly a series that I love. I'm going to remember those characters forever, and that's why it's firmly placed in the top 10. Coming in at number nine, Wow, well, you knew Brandon Sanderson was going to be here somewhere. And yep, coming in at number nine is the Stormlight Archive series. There are four books currently out. The fifth one is on the way in December of 2024. That book, he said, is going to close up the first arc of the first five books in what's supposed to be a 10-book series. So 
I love the Stormlight Archives, but there's a reason why it's only at number nine. And that's because I feel like, especially in books three and in book four, there are chapters and chapters that could have been omitted. The books are just bloated in my opinion, but they're still great, right? I mean, it's in my top 10 series of all time, so I'm not dumping on it too much, but I feel like these, some of these books don't need to be 13 or 1400 pages. They could have been condensed down to 900 pages, a thousand pages, and I don't think us as the readers would get anything less out of it. So Stormlight Archive coming in at a strong number nine on my top series of all time list. Coming in at number eight, we delve, of course, into urban fantasy. You knew it was going to be here somewhere, and that is The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. I love The Dresden Files. I read the first half of the series pretty much in ebook, and then I was turned on to the fact that James Marsters does an incredible audible narration, and so I've listened to probably the second half of all the books that have been published so far on audible. James Marsters is incredible. He is Harry Dresden in my mind, and so The Dresden Files coming in at a very strong number eight. Coming in at number seven, we're staying with urban fantasy. If you saw my urban fantasy video earlier, this week you knew he was going to be on here somewhere he's the monster who kills monsters of course i'm talking about sandman slim by richard cadry i love the sandman slim universe again are there worlds that are built much bigger than sandman slim of course there are but for me i'm really a character first reader and James Stark is somebody that I will absolutely remember forever, along with several other cast members in the series. I just love it. There's a nitty gritty, grimy, dirty feeling I get about Sandman Slim. And to some degree, I feel like 15 or 16 years in the bar business has made me relate to him quite a bit because that long in a nightclub, you run into just about every kind of human being possible. And I just feel really relatable to James Stark. I haven't been to hell, but I promise you 15 years in the bar business is pretty close to it. So coming in at a strong number seven is Sandman Slim by Richard Cadry. Okay, coming in at number six, it's time for some table flipping, folks, because I want to preface this, this list is my personal favorite. This is not some objective, this is why, theoretically, this happens to be the greatest fantasy series of all time. We're not getting academic about this list. This is my personal preference, and that's why coming in at number six is get your, you know, if you're going to flip the tables, make sure you, you know, you got a good grip on them. Coming in at number six is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, obviously, The Lord of the Rings speaks for itself. It's a pillar that really holds up pretty much all the other fantasy that's come out since. But for me, Lord of the Rings is just that. It's a pillar. Yes, I'm going to remember the characters forever. I didn't love Frodo. Um, I actually like Bilbo better than Frodo. Um, I think the book is about Sam anyways. That's a whole nother conversation. We can get into some Tolkien scholars. I bet you there's one right now that's watching this video. But for me, it's just kind of a number six. The biggest thing that I did learn, I think, about reading The Lord of the Rings is that while hobbits may be tricksy, they're not as mean as Orcsuses. And just to kind of extrapolate along that, I mentioned that to the people that run the Tolkien estate. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but they have a brand new leather bound edition of the Lord of the Rings coming out. And they put that blurb on the back. I don't know if I can get through this. They put the blurb on the back of the book. Roll the clip. <laughs> So coming in at number six is The Lord of the Rings. Coming in at number five. Now this top five is pretty set in stone. I don't see a whole lot of shuffling here. This part of the list was much easier for me to do than the six through 10 and the honorable mentions. But coming in at number five, 14 books, 4.4 million words. Of course, we have The Wheel of Time. Now, 
I love the Wheel of Time. Certainly the slog is real. I've been watching some videos. I know Patrick is a huge booktuber and he's entering or is in the middle of the slog right now. Yeah, it's the quicksand of the series, no doubt. But in some sense, that's what kind of makes the Wheel of Time the Wheel of Time. There's a big slog in the middle of it. And when is there ever an adventure that there's not some challenges, right? So if we've got a 14 book series, that's a big challenge in and of itself. But throw in four consecutive books that are all marginal at best, and you're gonna get a pretty amazing journey from start to finish. I loved how the series began. I loved how the series ended. Brandon Sanderson, for me, did a wonderful job of ending that series. So Wheel of Time, number five, absolutely deserves to be there. Okay, coming in at number four was basically a coin toss between number four and number three. And on any given day, I think they could probably switch places. Again, this is just a fun list, so maybe by tomorrow they will have switched places. But coming in at number four is Joe Abercrombie's First Law Universe. I've read the first trilogy, I've read all three standalone books, and I've read the second trilogy, The Age of Madness. I love Joe Abercrombie's writing style. I love his humor. There are very, very few fantasy books that actually get me to laugh out loud for real. And that happened in every single entry in all nine books I've read of Joe Abercrombie's First Law Universe. It's fantastic. The characters are so well developed. Whether you love them or you hate them, in Joe Abercrombie's First Law Universe, not only is there great humor, but there's amazing action and misdirection and characterizations and plot points that sometimes go nowhere and sometimes go somewhere very definite. It's almost like if you were a kid doing one of those mazes at the, you know, at McDonald's. McDonald's and you're going through and you get to a dead end and you got to go around and get to somewhere else. To me, sometimes that's what feels like the first law, where some of the quests they go on don't really lead anywhere, but that's kind of part of the fun. I love it so much. It did come in at number four, just eked out by number three. Okay, we're here at the top three of my all-time fantasy series lists. <laughs> Coming in at number three, I want you to stand and be true. I want you to have long days and pleasant nights. And if you don't think this should be number three on my list, then you have clearly forgotten the face of your father. Yup, coming in at number three, Stephen King's The Dark Tower. I love this series. I couldn't get enough of it, with the exception of book six, which I do have some gripes with, and a little bit of book seven, which I also have some gripes with. Not the ending. I think the ending was marvelous in the best possible way. But wow, did I love this. Roland Deschain, for me, is the ultimate fantasy protagonist, and I sometimes kind of feel like Roland, where you're looking around going, you know... Am I still part of the world or has the world moved on? And his hero's journey to the Dark Tower and remember all paths of the beam lead to the Dark Tower is fantastic. His quartet are some of my favorite characters that I will ever read in any book series, fantasy or anything else otherwise. I love the Dark Tower so much. The multiverse of Stephen King is so vast, but even had I not read any other Stephen King books, The Dark Tower would stand for me as a top tier series of all time, and today it's making it to number three. Okay, coming in at number two, here we go. Number two, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. It's so good. Of course, most of you have read it, and if you haven't, probably have seen the TV show. This series really does have everything, from the mystical dragons to the political scheming and machinations of the different leaders across several different continents. Westeros itself is just a brilliant display of legendary world building. It might slide down the list, and it might move up the list, and it all depends on the author. I'm greatly disappointed where we are. I'm not as disappointed in like somebody like Pat Rothfuss or Scott Lynch because they're not out actively writing other material while we sit on an unfinished series with A Song of Ice and Fire. We need to get this series finished because while the five books that are out are good, we're left hanging in the middle. 
Can you imagine if Tolkien stopped after the two towers? I don't think we would contemplate the Lord of the Rings as a potential greatest, and in some regard, most people think it is the greatest fantasy series of all time. I think if he had just ended at the two towers, it wouldn't even be in the discussion. That's how good A Song of Ice and Fire is. Those five books land in pretty much everybody's top series all time list, and we're only part way through the story. Yeah, maybe there's two books left and that doesn't seem like a lot, but with the amount of action and activity and drama and events that happen in those books, two books, anything could happen. So while it might be premature to put him at number two or to put this series at number two, it could easily go to number one if the thing ever gets finished. If it doesn't get finished, it's going to slip down my list. There's just too many other authors out there writing fantastic material that sooner or later are going to complete something that stands as a clear number one or a number two, and George is going to slide down the list. I'm hopeful that a Winds of Winter comes out relatively soon in the next year or two. I don't know, maybe George is doing something awesome and he's gonna drop you know, a Dream of Spring, which I believe is the final book title. Maybe he'll drop that, kind of shadow drop it, right when he drops A Winds of Winter. Uh, I doubt it. So that's what we have for number two. I wanna thank everybody for watching this fit. Oh, I suppose we should probably do number one, huh? Okay, coming in at number one. Wow, this series is huge. This series has the best character development in any series I've ever read. At times it's slow pace. At times it, yeah, it does feel like a slow burn, but the characters, especially two of them, well, really three of them, will stick with me for the rest of my life. Of course, I am talking about The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. I read these books a long time ago and I still remember them like they were yesterday. Maybe not each little plot detail, but the overall gist of the book. Come on, how do you forget Night Eyes, right? Probably the greatest animal companion of all time. Fitz, what a character that we grow up with from the time he's a child to the time that he's an old man. The live ship traders, what an amazing trilogy out of absolutely nowhere that is mostly disconnected to the main part of the series until we get to the later books. Yeah, the Rain Wild Chronicles, I can take them or leave them like most readers probably can. They didn't do a lot for me. I'm not exactly sure why she turned it into a full-on trilogy or quartet of books. I think there's been some talk that it was supposed to be a trilogy and it got split up. Once you get through the Rain Wild Chronicles, and you get to the Fitz and the Fool end trilogy, it's the best end trilogy I could have ever hoped for. Robin Hobbs, Realm of the Elderlings, in its totality, even counting the books that I didn't love so much, there's so much greatness in the ones that I did, lands at a firm number one spot on my all-time fantasy list. Of course, we have to do one for the road today. And in today's theme, we're gonna talk about other people's opinions. These lists are subjective, they're just my opinion. You can agree, you can disagree, it doesn't matter. And such is with your normal life too. Everybody has an opinion about what you're doing. Your choice and my challenge to you is think real hard about whose opinions you take seriously and whose you just leave it at that. It's just their opinion. You can do whatever you want in life, I promise. There are things that, you know what, maybe I'm never gonna dunk a basketball, so I probably can't do that. But I believe if we set our minds to doing something, just because somebody else thinks that we can't, it doesn't really matter. They're on their own journey. Let them go be on their own journey. Let them have their opinion. Who cares? Other people's opinions are only that. They're just their opinions. I want you to take your opinion the most seriously because that's the one that's most important. And here's your fortune.